what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna be checking out wwe killed the biggest opportunity it had wrestlemania is talking about judgment day the group that a lot of us were excited that was created by edge only to be disappointed when edge got the boot and then we found out why he got the boot creative differences in the back apparently this is what they were saying apparently they wanted the judgment day group to go in a supernatural route which edge was not for so they kicked him out the group and you know what it, it really does suck because the group you can tell was made to help stars that are kind of just floating around on the roster like noticeable stars people know who they are but they're not really getting over the hump like it's not really much for them to do or they're not getting where they need to be you know like they're just kind of floating around in the mid card space so this was a way to get them over and they dropped the ball on that so we're gonna check this out uh once again y'all go subscribe to wrestling if you haven't already I've been subscribed to him for quite some time so go check out some more of his other videos i as soon as i seen that he dropped this i wanted to check it out with you guys because i think this is a a very interesting topic to really dive into so let's get right into this bad boy man what's happened to the judgment day the once white hot faction that became less popular than the 24 7 championship division ah, just overnight this is very now, true unfortunately looks at how wwe oh, have blocked it with the judgment day faction wwe's biggest opportunity in some time they definitely sure to subscribe uh, and hit that notification bell for daily up. wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists also check out wrestlemania.co.uk and a non-wrestling channel incredible <laughs> well, the judgment day is doa aka dead on arrival yep. an incredible reversal of fortune for one of the wwe's hardest factions since the hurt business Regrettably, it looks like the Judgment Day will go down in history just like the Hurt Business did. A faction that was white hot with wrestling yeah. fans, but that the WWE found a way to ruin The Hurt Business had so much promise and potential, and they, WWE, for whatever reason, messed that up too. I don't know why. I, it's like the, the formula is there to really help other wrestlers get themselves over even more. Bobby was already getting over with the help of MVP. Having Cedric and um, Sheldon Benjamin there with him, that would have helped them as well. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, this is why factions are created. Sometimes they're created to help one guy really get over more than everybody else. And in other situations, they're able to get somebody that wasn't doing nothing on the roster, get some TV time, Get some people to care about them as well. That's what it's supposed to do. Doing it as good as the hurt business was, the case can be made that the Judgment Day had even more potential, and that it could have jump started both Raw and SmackDown. Firstly, it was a powerful premise, mm -hmm. but the Judgment Day had money written all over it. Things got off to a superb start as Edge bitter over his repeated failures to create new glories after a miraculous return from retirement assembled a faction of rising stars who also felt held back by their reliance on pleasing the fans. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley, who have both tasted success, clearly wanted more and Edge told them everything they wanted to hear. The group did what they said and beat down WWE talent with promises of more destruction to come as well as an open invitation to anyone in the WWE to come join them. It didn't take long for the Judgment Day to become the most exciting thing happening on Raw. This is very true. On paper, true. the Judgment Day had the potential to target both Raw and SmackDown superstars and Edge's remark about losing to someone cosplaying Aquaman was a great tease for an Edge vs. Roman rematch. I love that segment. I love that little promo segment. I'm thinking... This is nice. This is what I want to see. Even though Edge is a heel, Roman is a heel, I'm all for it. Uh, who would not want to see the Judgment Day faction, depending on how many more people they added, versus the Bloodline in like a Survivor Series elimination match? And you found a way to get the WWE Championship off of Roman back on Monday Night Raw, and somehow Edge was able to get the championship. Edge was able to get the championship, and he's, you know, leading Team Judgment Day over Team Blo uh, the, the Bloodline. Like, that would have been a nice Survivor Series match. I would have been all for it. 
I would have been all for it. Hell, you don't even have to put the title on Edge, the WWE Championship. That's still a main event feud. They could have been trying to destroy each other on each other's show. Like, it, the possibilities there were just, they were there. But WWE, I, I don't know. They just wanted to go the supernatural route. Like, what are we talking about? This time with Edge having backup. But why did it fall apart? The Judgment Day continued its winning ways, defeating the trio of Liv Morgan, AJ Styles and Finn Balor and Helena Cell, mm -hmm. and promising a new member. Regrettably, that's when everything fell apart, as the Judgment Day introduced its newest member the next night on Raw, with Finn Balor joining the group and helping Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley kick Edge out of the very group he'd assembled. Mm -hmm. The most obvious reason why Judgment Day is DOA is the decision to take its founder Edge out of the group. However, there's more to the group going from the penthouse to the outhouse than the loss of its leader. The first is a poorly executed plan. A kicking edge out of the Judgment Day wasn't a bad idea. However, as often happens with the WWE's creative department, the plan was poorly executed, yeah. resulting in a dull aftermath and a variety of plot holes in what should have been a dynamic development for the group of heels. Yeah. The writers also failed to follow up with a compelling storyline to show why the new version of the Judgment Day was even more dangerous than the first. Number two, hot shot booking. A booting edge out of the Judgment Day was more hot shot booking from the WWE, and as we've noted before, there can be cases where hot shot booking works, but usually these instances are the exceptions that prove the rule. Although the WWE seems to have leaked stories that Edge didn't want to participate in a supernatural storyline, there's no evidence to back up the supernatural storyline spin. Certainly, the Judgment Day had a gothic feel from it from the start, but there were never any supernatural elements, nor have there been any since Edge. And here's the thing about that rumor. I somewhat believe it because it's WWE. That's the, their, their creative team. And and I don't even think it's just all their creative team. I think Vince has the ultimate say so. I think that just reeks of Vince McMahon. Oh, let's add a supernatural element. You know, or somebody that like really is a yes man for Vince saying that. Like, I just, I can believe that a lot more. Because it's WWE we're talking about. And I could see why Edge was like, you know what? I'm out of here. Just take me out. And it was a weird thing when it happened because it was so soon. Like, they just created the faction. So if Edge was going to get the boot, I would think it would have been much later when these guys are really established as something, a very serious threat here, you know? But you see what happened. Edge left the group. The WWE is unlikely to admit this, but the evidence <coughs> suggests Edge was kicked out in order to give Raw a top babyface. Furthermore, Edge's latest turn is problematic as the Rated R superstar has fallen into the same category as the Big Show and Braun Strowman, superstars whose turns make no sense and usually without any explanation. While wrestling fans have short memories when it comes to heel turns, this one could end up hurting his character as the fans will have little reason to cheer a man who just spent the last two months insulting them. Yeah. Kicking Edge out has led to no advance in the storyline. The decision to have the heels govern themselves as equals may have seemed logical because no one left in the group stands out as a main eventer unlike mm. Edge. No. Unfortunately, the Judgment Day's collaborative rule has led to no accomplishments like the original incarnation had, making them look incompetent. It didn't help that the Judgment Day seemed to sit on their hands for the next two weeks after eliminating Edge, suggesting yeah. that WWE wasn't even sure what to do with the new tree. They didn't even do nothing when I'm after it. If you're going to do that, you got to have them wreck shop on everybody. That's what I would have had. Them just screwing up matches before Rhea got hurt and stuff. I would have had them just doing all type of chaotic stuff to really illustrate they have gone mega rogue. No one can tell them what to do. They're going to destroy Raw, SmackDown, NXT, don't matter, until they get what they want. Rio after Edge's expulsion. Number three, gaping plot holes. Unlike most seemingly hot-shotted storylines, there are plenty of plot holes in the Judgment Day 2.0. First, there was no explanation for just what led to the faction turning on Edge, a leader who helped them get their, dare we say, competitor's Edge back. Second, what made the group think that Finn Balor was a good addition when he proved incapable of defeating anyone from the Judgment Day? Mm -hmm. These storyline shortcomings could have easily been explained, but so far they haven't. The These decision to expel points. Edge could have been based on the group becoming intoxicated with their recent success and power, but the WWE has done nothing to show this with promos or backstage segments. 
As for recruiting Balor, the WWE could have shown Balor deciding that he's had enough of getting beat up every week and or revealing he planted seeds of doubt in Priest and Ripley, take the group over with the promise that he could help the Nightmare and the Archer of Infamy accomplish even more than what they did with Edge. The WWE Universe have come to expect plot holes, mm -hmm. may they be minor or gaping, but when they affect a popular storyline, it's a wretched reflection on the entire company and bad for the fans' morale. Fans are still getting over their disgust with what happened with the Hurt business and yep. this is sure to cause even more friction between fans and the WWE. Number 4. Rhea Ripley's Injury yeah. Now obviously this was out of WWE's hands, but Rhea Ripley's injury obviously slowed down some of the group's post-edge momentum, but they were already in bad shape after they kicked Edge out of the group. The Nightmare has been vague about the exact nature of her injury, so it's impossible to know whether she can appear to cut promos. You'd think the WWE could have had her tape vignettes, but assuming she can't, why not add another member who can talk? Alexa Bliss could have easily mm. stepped into the Judgment Day, and as fans know, her name was brought up as a potential member before Rhea Ripley joined, and considering the skills she showed playing a demon doll for the Fiend, <laughs> a twisted version of Little Miss Bliss seems like an easy way to make up for Ripley's absence. I know for a fact a lot of you <laughs> Alexa, Bliss, uh, Alexa, Alexa Bliss fans we're talking about the the hardcore fans. Oh, y'all would lose y'all would lose your mind in ecstasy if y'all found out she joined. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, I don't even want to think about the the comments. Oh, mommy, mommy Alexa Bliss. Yes, she's she's part of the group now. Worship her. Y'all love y'all some Alexa Bliss a little bit too much sometimes. Number 5. Poor Promos A Ripley quickly proved she was the Judgment Day's most charismatic worker and is the best talker once Edge was removed. Damian Priest is better used as a strong silent type while mm -hmm. Finn Balor just hasn't had too many opportunities to talk in WWE. Number 6. Stalled Storylines <clears throat> One of the worst elements of the post-Edge Judgment Day is that the group has gone from working a high-profile program with AJ Styles to wrestling Ray and Dominic in a hastily assembled series. The only promise here is a Dominic heel turn, but the WWE mm -hmm. has teased Dominic turning heel for the last year and a heel turn could be a good way to jumpstart the Judgment Day and Dominic, who should be doing more than just playing V's punching bag. Yeah. It's obvious that Creative has put the Judgment Day's development and storylines on hold pending Edge's return but there's more problems ahead. As bad as the Judgment Day's decline has been, things are likely only going to get worse when Edge returns. Don't be surprised to see the Rated R Superstar dismantle the group by himself, with Damian Priest sliding back down the card and Balor disappearing into obscurity in yep. a main event. Despite the Judgment Day circling... <laughs> Not a main event. Oh, no. That's the wrestling... Well, WWE wrestling purgatory. When you start getting booked for main event... It's raps be drain the wwe can still breathe some life into it by having rhea ripley do the majority of the talking at least until finn balor finds his voice and or recruiting a member who has more charisma as an upper card or preferably main event player such as alexa bliss the judgment day's problem is entirely of the wwe's making which means it shouldn't have to bring a former superstar back or bring in someone from outside the company while the idea of doing so may be tempting especially if they were like to pick bray wyatt or something there's just as much chance the WWE will stumble with an outsider. The Judgment Day still has potential, and the right moves could get it back on track. This includes bringing one or two new members from Raw, SmackDown, or even NXT, mm -hmm. having the group start causing havoc on all three brands as it renews it. I was just saying that. Have them cause chaos. Chaos will breed some excitement, some life. Have them just start screwing up shit on all the shows. Make people care. You can still do this without Edge. Make people care and then have Edge come back. But we know Edge coming back, he's going to try to murder them all. So I don't I don't know what you do there. But if you want to really bring some interest to them, have them do that. It's mission statement to pass judgment on the WWE and planning out a long-term storyline for the group that features them on a regular basis. But there you have it, guys. Yeah. It's actually kind of simple. I know Rhea's out, so... Take his advice. Maybe get Alexa Bliss. Because Alexa Bliss is not really doing anything right now. So I think that would kind of be cool. You know. Uh, you can have Alexa Bliss fill in for um, for Rhea Ripley. And then Rhea Ripley comes back. And initially, you know, she they, they have some tension too. Alexa Bliss and Rhea Ripley. Because, you know, they start to, you know, listen more to 
uh, Alexa Bliss more than Rhea Ripley, and there's some dissension there. You can create some dissension there. Like, there's ways to really book this. You just gotta fucking do it. It's actually not as hard as they think it is. It's not. If you want to get these guys over, get them over. Have them really cause some chaos. Build a storyline around them taking over WWE and passing judgment on everyone. I would love. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Hopefully they do it, but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. So comment down below. Let me know how do y'all feel about judgment day and where they stand now do you guys think they should add someone like alexa bliss into the mix or who would you like to see in judgment day that you feel like that could get them over like kind of where they were before they kicked out edge let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace